Dear colleagues, good morning. We will start now our uh, third day of our plenary, our morning session, and uh, before we resume our work, I want to inform you that uh, the electronic vote on the opinion discussed today will start at 10.50, 10.50 Brussels time. Please ensure that uh, you are present in the room, all connected and ready to vote by then. The voting time is scheduled to take place until 11.20 a.m. Brussels time. So let us now start with our debate on the Conference on the Future of Europe. Uh, dear Vice President Suica, dear Dubravka, welcome. It is really my honor to welcome you here today in our plenary. And first of all, I would like to thank you for uh, your exceptional work as co-chair of the Conference on the Future of Europe and uh, to admit publicly that I consider you as one of the closest friends and allies of the Committee of Regions and of the regional and local authorities all across Europe. Your help has been of utmost importance. And this not only in words, which we are used to in Brussels, but in actions. And so I thank you. With each and every uh, action that uh, we undertake, it is uh, very obvious that we have a very good collaboration with uh, the Commissioner. And I want to reassure you once again, Commissioner, that all 18 plus 12 members of the regional and local delegation to the Conference on the Future of Europe, coming both from our House and other regions and cities all across Europe, will work hard for its success. And allow me to underline the fact that similarly, and in addition to the elected members of the national and European parliaments, our members, representing the 1.1 million regional and local leaders in 300 regions and 90,000 municipalities, by the nature of their elective mandates, also represent citizens in a politically accountable manner. And this is very important. Therefore, the basis of our legitimacy to directly engage with the main European institutions throughout the works of this conference is more in line with the actual powers of our members on the ground, rather than the treaty-based limitations that we have in our institutions. As a former mayor and a former member of the European Parliament, I'm sure that you understand our political line. And I'm also sure that you know that we will work tirelessly, putting the people and their real needs first as they put their trust in us through their vote to make their lives better. For that to happen, we need to make sure that the conference will go beyond Brussels, beyond Strasbourg, and beyond the city capitals. And this is our strong commitment and our determination to listen to the people in the places they live in and bring their voices back here to Brussels. As an example, I want to share with you the enthusiasm and the engagement of the young elected leader from Marano Lagunare, who called for permanent local dialogues with citizens during our recent event, which was organized in the regional parliament of Frulli Venezia Giulia in Trieste. In this context, I would like to reaffirm our readiness to develop a network of regional and local EU councillors that goes beyond the COR members in order to reinforce citizen engagement via the one million elected politicians. Now, let me thank you again for the support you have shown to this project via the open letter that was signed on the 9th of May in Strasbourg. And as agreed with you, Vice President, we wish to seek synergies with the Belle project proposed by the European Parliament for a greater impact throughout the Union. I trust that your team 
in the Commission and our team here will work closely for this successful implementation. And at the same time, we will work on promoting our democratic values via education so that we can explain to the young people and to our children why the European Union should exist today and in the future. Because, after all, Commissioner, this is what we believe. Our common house needs to be further consolidated by reinforcing the trust of our people in a values-based democracy that delivers results, that promotes fundamental values, and, above all, that respects the rule of law. So, dear Commissioner, dear Dubravka, the floor is yours. Thank you, Apostolos. Uh, good morning to everybody, dear members of the European Committee of the Regions, uh, dear ladies and gentlemen. As uh, former mayor, what you said, uh, Mr. Sisikostas, it is always a pleasure for me to be here, to have the opportunity to exchange the views uh, with you, with the members uh, of the European Committee of the Regions. And uh, perhaps uh, never more so at this moment when the Conference on the Future of Europe has entered a particularly interesting phase your commitment to bringing Europe closer to its people and in reinforcing European democracy at all levels of government, and most importantly from the very roots, is greatly appreciated and indeed very necessary. I have said it before and I will say it again today. Without your involvement and without your dedication, the conference could not fulfill its potential in reaching out to every citizen from the mountains to the islands. I share your vision and commitment, and from day one, as Vice President of the European Commission in charge of democracy and demography, I have invested all my energy in citizens' empowerment and engagement. This is because I am convinced that this is crucial to ensure that people are an integral part of the policy-making process. And of course, you are a valuable part in making this a reality. While I am most interested in hearing from you today, I would like to share some reflections on where we stand today. The platform is close to reaching 4 million individual users. Over 30,000 participants have registered to contribute individually with ideas and comments. Most importantly, 130,000 citizens have already participated in, the, in over more than 3,000 conference events announced on the platform. Many of these events, in, of these invest, uh, in events have involved you, the members of the European Committee of the Regions. With this platform, we have torn down language barriers, and for the first time, we have launched a truly pan-European debate with citizens from all 27 member states. The numbers are promising, but it is certainly not yet enough, and we must continue our awareness raising uh, and communication efforts. This week, we published the second interim report on the activities on the platform, in time to be taken into consideration by the upcoming plenary, which is next week. It is important to draw appropriate conclusions from these reports and how we can step up and target our communication better. I think in particular of the importance to improve the participation of young people, women, and people living in rural areas. I believe members of the Committee of the Regions are uniquely placed to help us to achieve broader engagement with these target audiences. I invite each one of you to take a few minutes to visit this platform, because it is only when you see it you can believe what a powerful tool we have placed at the disposal to our citizens. Since the uh, uh, 17th of September, a number of randomly selected citizens have been spending their weekends in Strasbourg. 
This is for me the really exciting and innovative part of the process. The start of the European Citizen Panels has moved the conference into a new phase. Three of the four European Citizens Panels have had a first, first session in which they have familiarized themselves with the topics raised on the platform and identified the issues they wish to discuss in depth in the remaining two sessions. These are regular people aged 16 to 85 who have agreed to take time out from their jobs and their families to take on the responsibility of participating in the panels, and they are doing this with admirable dedication. Initial feedback from the panels is that although quite a number of them were initially skeptical, they feel honored to participate in this unique exercise and are pleasantly surprised to be given this opportunity for their voice to be heard. Their engagement is impressive, given that almost none of them have ever participated in this type of event before. So far, I have observed online from afar, but I'm looking forward to going to Strasbourg tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, uh, to welcome the participants in the fourth panel on the European Europe Union in the world and migration. So it will start tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. All of us, as politicians, have a great deal of experience with citizens' engagement. But have you ever had the occasion to hear the voice of a 16-year-old student from Romania, a newly graduated Finn, a young mother from Italy, and an 85-year-old retired German at the same time? This is where the added, added value for the this, this is where there is added value for policymakers. This is how we are strengthening our representative democracy. We have provided multiple entry points for the citizens to participate. On, on the one hand, through the multilingual digital platform, and on the other, through the European citizens panels and the conference plenary. Indeed, it is in the plenary where citizens participate on a par or on an equal footing with elected representatives from all levels of governance, including the local and regional, to discuss with civil society and social partners. I firmly believe that the combination of these various entry points makes more voices and more perspectives heard than, uh, than any entity could on its own. I see a special role for representatives of the regional and local level. Because in the 27 member states of the European Union, you said, uh, Apostolos, there are more than 1 million, 1 million and uh, 1 million point, point one politic politicians who are uh, elected at uh, sub-national level. Being very close to the citizens, local elected politicians, as you are, have a privileged position in making a connection between what is often called distant Europe or distant Brussels, and the issue that resonates the most at the local level. And this is very important. In this regard, I was impressed to see the latest Eurobarometer flash survey that this committee has commissioned. It offers some unique insights into the views of local politicians and their engagement in the conference, as well as the importance they attach to the nine priority teams of the conference. Your long-standing experience and commitment on citizens' engagement in particular is an important source of reflection for all of us on how to involve as many citizens as possible <clears throat> in the debate. Some of you could have a special role in this by ensuring that EU matters are reflected at the local and regional level and that information on European issues is available in town halls across the European Union. I am aware that there are discussions on this, and I believe that developing idea could itself be a contribution to the conference because it brings the European Union closer to citizens. So we are in favor of creating, uh, uh, creating this, uh, uh, this activity which you announced. We made a strong commitment to follow up on the recommendations. This was recently confirmed again by President von der Leyen in the State of the Union speech. In the immediate future, the first round of European citizens' panels will finish this coming weekend. With the end of the agenda setting, discussions in the panels will focus even more on concrete, tangible deliberations. 
The plenary meeting on the 23rd of October will be a good occasion to bring together the different components and show, and show our collective commitment to citizens. Our discussions will evolve around the European citizens' panels and the multilingual digital platform, and we will hear reports from national citizens' panels and national events, which are important contributions to this process. We will also hear about the European Youth Event, which also brought thousands of young people together under the umbrella of, conference, of this conference. We are already preparing for the next phase, where after the deliberations, we will have the recommendations and proposals, which the executive board of the conference will draw up into the final report. We will formulate the report in full transparency and full collaboration with the plenary, including the participating members of this Committee of the Regions. Without preempting any outcome, I will say already now that it, that it is important that citizens can recognize themselves and their efforts in that report. I would also like to take this opportunity to say a few words about our work on demography. We are very much looking forward to working together with you on the implementation of our long-term vision for rural areas. We are now working on the roadmap and the launch of Rural Pact. For this, we need your continued support, especially because rural areas cannot enjoy further development unless, unless they are connected, well connect, connected between each other uh, and to peri-urban and urban areas. To close this uh, exist, existing digital gap, we need governance that is engaged at all levels. We need a mix of policy that can cater for the various needs which are often shared between urban and rural areas. In this context, I believe that a collaborative and participative approach can help to develop strategies that are comprehensive, integrated, and effective. To close the digital gap, we need an engaged governance at all levels and policy mixes that cater for the interdependencies between urban and rural areas. In this context, using collaborative and participatory approaches can help to develop integrated strategies. Another dimension we want to address together with you is the one of population decline and brain drain. Many European regions experience the phenomenon of depopulation, and we want to offer them solutions that are tailor-made to their needs, because there is no universal solution. And to conclude, dear ladies and gentlemen, I take this opportunity to again thank you sincerely for the many and varied contributions of Committee of the Regions to the conference, include, including the latest barometer and the work of the high-level group on European democracy. You know that more than many others, I know that local and regional politicians are best connected to their constituency. Indeed, it is through democracy at the local level that we truly strengthen our democracies, and we must continue our efforts to give a voice to sub-national governance. We will count on you in our upcoming work on making our democracy fit for the future. The conference helps us to acknowledge that the way we engage with citizens has been transformed, and we need to address this in partnership with you. Dear uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is only the beginning. I truly believe that in the future, those studying European democracy will look at it from the perspective of a pre- and post-conference period. The democratic life of the European Union will never be at the same, will never be the same again, and we are all richer for it. I want to thank you again and uh, uh, for your close work relationship, relationship. and uh, now I'm ready and I'm, I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Vice President. Uh, Vice President Suica, we uh, had a very clear understanding of your position vis-à-vis -vis the conference on the future of Europe and uh, of the work that's been done there. I have to admit that a lot of things have been done in very short time period, but this is how we need to move, as you said correctly, Vice President, quickly and successfully. So. 
Dear colleagues, uh, it is now time to start our debate with uh, Vice President Suica. I would like to give the floor to Mark Spike from the EPP. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrte Frau Vizepräsidentin, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, die Konferenz der Zukunft Europas war und ist mit großen Erwartungen verbunden. Und obwohl sie vor einem halben Jahr begonnen hat, hat es doch eine Weile gedauert, bis die Prozesse wirklich klar waren. Ich bin nun froh, dass wir in der kommenden Woche endlich auch die Arbeitsgruppensitzungen haben werden vor der Plenarversammlung und damit in die wirkliche Arbeit der Konferenz kommen. Der Endpunkt dieser Konferenz ist noch für das Frühjahr des nächsten Jahres definiert. Und viele fragen sich, ob dieser Zeitraum eigentlich ausreichen wird. Ich glaube, man muss auf diese Frage einen neuen Blick werfen. Wenn es darum geht, die Erwartungen, die Meinungen, die Hoffnungen und Vorstellungen der Bürgerinnen und Bürger Europas für die Zukunft Europas zu gewinnen, dann glaube ich, ist dieser Prozess ausreichend. Aber es wird eben nicht ausreichen, nur zuzuhören. Man wird auch Antworten geben müssen. Und damit beginnt eigentlich eine zweite Phase des Prozesses. Und die muss im nächsten Frühjahr beginnen. Und diese Phase muss sich auf die Frage der Veränderung der institutionellen Architektur konzentrieren. Vielleicht auch auf die Frage vertraglicher Änderungen, wenn das erforderlich sein sollte. Aber es muss, und deswegen bin ich Ihnen dankbar, Frau Kommissarin, dass Sie es gesagt haben, eine Postkonferenzphase geben. Und ich sage für den, ähm, für das, für den COA ganz deutlich, wir sind gerne Teil der ersten Phase gewesen, aber wir haben auch Anspruch, gestaltender Teil der zweiten Phase zu werden und diese Zukunft Europas auch in ihrer institutionellen Ausprägung mitzugestalten. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much, Mark. The floor now to uh, Ms. Durkiewicz, please. From the EPP. Szanowna Pani Komisarz, Pani Prezydent, Szanowny Panie Przewodniczący, bardzo dziękuję za te ostatnie pięć miesięcy debaty, debaty o przyszłości Europy, ale także dziękuję moim koleżankom i kolegom, nie tylko z grupy IPP, ale także z Komitetu Regionów, że aktywnie się w to włączamy, bowiem lokalne społeczności, nasze gminy, miasta, regiony, to są właśnie te miejsca, w których możemy dbać i wspierać demokrację lokalną, która mam nadzieję, że będzie przeradzać się także we wzmocnienie demokracji na poziomie krajowym, na poziomie naszych państw, ale także na poziomie Unii Europejskiej. Jako członkowie Komitetu Regionów jesteśmy łącznikami właśnie między instytucjami europejskimi, a obywatelami, mieszkańcami naszych miast i regionów i bardzo ważną pełnimy rolę właśnie w informowaniu o tym, co robi w sprawie wartości, ale także przyszłości Unia Europejska. Cieszę się bardzo, że mogłam być nie tak dawno sprawozdawcą naszej opinii, opinii Komitetu Regionów dotyczącej Europejskiego Pakietu Działań na Rzecz Demokracji, który został gruntownie przez nas przedyskutowany i mam nadzieję, że kolejne rozwiązania będą wdrażane. Jesteśmy do dyspozycji, wspieramy siebie wzajemnie bo to ważna bardzo sprawa dla przyszłości nie tylko naszych lokalnych wspólnot, ale także silnych lokalnych wspólnot w Zjednoczonej Europie, żeby demokracja i wartości takie, z którymi mamy czasami kłopot, także w moim kraju, w Polsce, rozwijały się i trwały nadal. Bardzo dziękuję. Thank you very much. Ms. Onenau from the PES Group. Sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, sehr geehrte Frau Vizepräsidentin, im Namen der SPE-Fraktion bedanke ich mich, dass Sie heute mit uns zur Konferenz zur Zukunft Europas debattieren. Die Konferenz ist eine große Chance, die Europäische Union auf ein noch stärkeres von seinen Bürgerinnen und Bürgern getragenes Fundament zu setzen und den europäischen Reformprozess voranzubringen. 
Darum liegt es im Interesse aller Freundinnen und Freunde des europäischen Integrationsprojekts, dass die Konferenz am Ende auch Ergebnisse liefert. Die Konferenz zur Zukunft Europas hatte einen holprigen Start. Bis zur Eröffnung hatte es lange gedauert. Viele Rahmenbedingungen wurden erst Schritt für Schritt geklärt. Zudem sind Verfahren und Umgang mit den späteren Ergebnissen der Konferenz immer noch nicht klar kommuniziert. Dennoch, und da sind wir als Sozialdemokratinnen und Sozialdemokraten weiter grundsätzlich optimistisch, kann und ich will sagen, muss die Konferenz ein Erfolg werden. Wichtig sind hierfür zwei Punkte. Zum einen müssen wir jederzeit transparent und nachvollziehbar handeln. Daher begrüße ich beispielsweise die Entscheidung, die Ergebnisse der in der nächsten Woche erstmals tagenden Arbeitsgruppen festzuhalten und auf der digitalen Plattform der Konferenz zu veröffentlichen. Zum anderen müssen wir sicherstellen, dass die Ideen und Vorschläge der Bürgerinnen und Bürger am Ende auch tatsächlich in die Ergebnisse der Konferenz einfließen. Alles andere würde den angedachten Beteiligungsprozess ad absurdum führen und die Glaubwürdigkeit der Europäischen Union beschädigen. Die Bürgerinnen und Bürger müssen erleben, dass ihre Anregungen in den weiteren Prozess einfließen und sie die Zukunft der Europäischen Union dadurch aktiv mitgestalten können. Es geht dabei um eine Union, die mehr ist als nur ein Wirtschaftsraum. Eine Union, die Identität stiftet und den sozialen Zusammenhalt stärkt und eine Union, die von ihren Bürgerinnen und Bürgern breit getragen wird. Liebe Kolleginnen und liebe Kollegen, endlich geht es jetzt auch richtig los. Mittlerweile sind bereits über 8000 Ideen der Bürgerinnen und Bürger auf der digitalen Plattform der Konferenz eingegangen. Die verschiedenen europäischen Bürgerforen tagen derzeit und bald werden auch die Arbeitsgruppen der Plenarversammlung ihre Arbeit aufnehmen. Vor diesem Hintergrund freue ich mich sehr, die deutschen Länder, also den Bundesrat, in der Plenarversammlung der Konferenz zu vertreten und mich in die anstehende inhaltliche Debatte einbringen zu können. Gespannt bin ich dabei insbesondere auch auf Diskussionen zu der Frage, wie die Rolle der Region weiter gestärkt werden kann. Aber natürlich gibt es viele weitere wichtige Themen, die durch die Debatte im Rahmen der Konferenz vorangebracht werden können und sollten. Dies sind beispielsweise die Bewältigung der Klimakrise und ein gerechter Übergang, auch mit Hilfe der Neubelebung der UN-Nachhaltigkeitsziele auf EU-Ebene. Die wirtschaftliche Transformation in Richtung Klimaneutralität mit Hilfe des europäischen Green Deal, der insbesondere auch für einen sozial abgesicherten Übergang sorgen muss. Die Digitalisierung, die Gestaltung eines sozialeren und gerechteren Europas sowie die Bewahrung und Stärkung der Grundwerte der Europäischen Union, sei es mit Blick auf die Bewahrung der Rechtsstaatlichkeit, auf die Gleichstellung zwischen Männern und Frauen, auf die Rechte von LGBTIQ-Menschen oder auf eine menschenwürdige Migrationspolitik. Die Konferenz ist eine große Chance, diese Schlüsselthemen mit neuem Elan und guten Ideen anzugehen und die Europäische Union getragen von ihren Bürgerinnen und Bürgern für die Zukunft noch besser aufzustellen. Lassen Sie uns diese Chance gemeinsam nutzen. Hören wir unseren Bürgerinnen und Bürgern gut zu. Vielen Dank für die Aufmerksamkeit. Danke schön. Miss Elorza Subiria now, please. Thank you very much, President, and on behalf of the Renew Europe Group, I would like to thank Vice President Suiza for being with us here today and sharing her impressions. And now I'll continue in Basque, my intervention. Joan den maiatzean, ilusio ondiz hartu genuen Europako etorkizunari buruzko konvenzioa abian jartzea. Konferentzia aukera paregabea bai da Europako proiektuari bultzaba emateko eta inertzia gainditzeko. Prozesu honen emaitza Europako herritarren proposamenak asalera daitezen errazteko dugun gaitasunaren mende egongo da. Baita, haien eskaerei zintzotasunez erantzutearen mende ere. Presidente orde agurgarria ziur egon Renew Europe taldearen laguntza izango dezula zere ginorretan. Lehen osoko bilkuraren ondoren proposatutako bederatzi lantaldeen sorrera babesten dugu. 
lantalde horiek askotariko gaiak jorratuko dituzte eta guztiak dira egokiak. Zalantzari gabe funtsezkoa da Europar Batasuna zer eta zertarako den hausnartzea. Dena dela, hori bezain garrantzitsua da, norabide zuzenean aurrera egiteko politikak eta ekimenak nola eta nork diseinatu eta implementatuko dituen hausnartzea. Azken batean, behar dugun gobernantza eredua eriburuz gogoeta egitea. Gaur, osoko bilkura honetan zaudela baliatu nahi dut, eskaera bat egiteko. Konferentziak lehen bailen azter dezala nola hobeto txertatu eskualdeak Europar Batasunaren gobernantzan, bereziki legie eskumenak ditugun eskualdeak. Batzorde honetara gerturatzen direnek, askotan, Adierazten dute, eskualdetako eta tokiko gobernuak lehen lerroan gaudela, pandemiaren, klima erronkaren edo eta susperraldiaren lehen lerroan. Argi usten dute, aurrean ditugun erronka itzela gangen ditzeko, lurraldeak aintzat hartu beharko direla. Horregatik, premiazkoa da usnartzea eskualdeek nola eragin dezaketen zuzenean Europar Batasunaren politiken diseinuen. Premiazkoa da elkarrekin irudikatzea, nola indartu bat batzorde honen rola, eta nola eman garrantzi handiagoa gure estabaidei eta prestatzen ditugun irizpenei. Eta arreta berezia jarri beharko zaile lege eskumenak dituzten eskualdei. Ez dago astu behar Europan estatu dezentralizatuak daudela, eta eskumen politiko zabalak dituzten eskualdeak ere daudela. Hildo horretan, lanerako oinarri egokia litzateke 2002ko Europako konbentzioan formulatu zen estatus adok baten proposamena. Gobernu maia guzien ahalmenak mobilizatu behar ditugu, aurretik ditugun eraldaketei ekiteko, eta etorkizuneko belaunoldien ongizatea finkatzeko. Benetan espero dut konferentzia honek behar bezala eta modu egokian eltzea maia anitzeko gobernantza efektiboaren estabaidari. Aspaldi egiteke dagoen estabaida. Mila esker zure arretagatik komisarian derea. Thank you very much, Mr. Branda from the ECR, our next speaker, please. Uh, dear Madam Commissioner, uh, dear colleagues, uh, I would like to take this chance uh, to actually share with you the results of uh, our work as COR in one of the very important topics, and it is the topic of cross-border cooperation. This topic is not specifically uh, mentioned uh, within the conference, but it is a cross-cutting theme affecting daily lives of more than one-third of EU citizens living in border regions. Um, as you probably know, uh, at our last plenary in July, we've adopted a resolution on the future of cross-border cooperation that we feel should be an integral part of the discussion within the Conference on the Future of, of, of Europe. Um, there are several prerequisites uh, to be met for the cross-border cooperation to develop further in the, in the future, and the first one are open borders, uh, something that maybe we have taken for granted in the last years, but uh, through the pandemic we witnessed... Um, uh, almost a shock. Uh, when visiting Austria, we had an event in uh, your region, Trentino, uh, Tirol, South Tirol, uh, two weeks ago. I was reminded of my personal memory even as a child crossing the Iron Curtain from Czechoslovakia with my grandfather who was born in Austria uh, to, to, to enter Austria. It was such a strong experience, you know, the barbed wires and several checks and the fear. Uh, and I thought, you know, after... Uh, entering the EU and uh, entering the Schengen area, that this, this, is, this endeavor to open the border is done and it's done forever. Uh, and I thought I will never experience the closed borders again, but we witnessed it uh, all in last, uh, last, uh, last months. So I think for the cross-border cooperation to have any future at all, we need to keep the borders open. Our great endeavor, I think, should be uh, to keep the borders open and never again allowing the closure of borders. Uh, I mean, never, never again. Uh, so that's why the, the most important point of our resolution uh, is that we call on the European Commission to present a proposal for maintaining cross-border cooperation and cross-border life in the event of an EU-wide and regional crisis, like, for example, the pandemic. Um, this proposal should envisage that internal EU borders will be kept open, ensuring the free movement of people 
and the delivery of cross-border public services and guaranteeing uh, the full and smooth functioning of a single market and the Schengen area. Uh, there are several other points I wanted to make, but this was, uh, I don't have time, so this was the, the main one. So I hope that we will be able to reach these goals and actually increase the quality of daily lives of citizens living in border regions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Van Luwe from the EA Group, please. Thank you, President. Thank you, colleagues. Commissaris Huidza. Hartelijk dank voor uw bijzonder interessante tussenkomst. Ik denk dat het bijzonder belangrijk is dat we het debat rond de toekomstconferentie ook hier in ons comité van de regio's kunnen voeren. Ik hoop dat de toekomstconferentie niet zomaar één groot event zal worden van public relations, waarin het grote gelijk zal worden bevestigd dat er altijd meer centralisering moet komen vanuit Europa. Als dit van een regionaal parlement, het Vlaams parlement, die ook zelf zetelt in de plenaire vergadering van de toekomstconferentie, wil ik een duidelijk geluid laten horen. Ik bepleit namelijk een Europese Unie die zich inzet om een echte meerwaarde te creëren voor de Europeanen, voor de burgers, maar ook voor de bedrijven, de organisaties, die ervoor moet zorgen dat de interne markt verder verdiept wordt ter versterking van onze welvaart en ook van ons welzijn. Geen superstaat die het sub, uh, subsidiariteitsbeginsel niet respecteert, maar die wel pleit voor een divers Europa. Een verenigd Europa, maar dan wel in verscheidenheid. Respect voor de verscheidenheid binnen onze Europese Unie. Rekening houdend ook met de diverse deelstaten die ook wetgevende bevoegdheden hebben, rekening houden met de verschillende regio's, de lokale besturen, die allemaal dichtstaan bij de burgers. Maar ook een Unie die de democratische en legitieme wil van burgers om te leven in een eigen autonome staat binnen de Europese Unie respecteert. Een Unie die bijvoorbeeld kansen geeft aan Catalanen of Corsicanen of Vlamingen of aan zoveel andere regio's om via een interne uitbreiding toe te treden tot de Europese Unie nadat ze hun autonomie op een wettelijke en democratische manier verkregen. Dat is alvast mijn wens voor de toekomstconferentie, maar ook van vele Europeanen wonende in vele regio's en deelstaten binnen onze Europese Unie. Ik dank u. Thank you very much. Ms. Aras, please. Sehr geehrte Frau Vizepräsidentin, meine Damen und Herren, nach langen Diskussionen ist die Konferenz im Mai dieses Jahres mit einem Jahr Verspätung endlich gestartet. Am 22. und 23. Oktober steht die zweite Plenartagung in Straßburg an. Ich werde für den ADR daran teilnehmen. Leider sind die Arbeitsgruppen, das haben Sie auch noch mal gesagt, immer noch nicht arbeitsfähig. Dabei wäre ein erster Austausch mit den Bürgerinnen und Bürgern aus den Bürgerpanels extrem wichtig gewesen. Und am Ende des ersten Quartals 2022 sollen schon die Ergebnisse vorliegen. Ich frage mich, wie soll das gehen? Und ich finde das ehrlich gesagt alles andere, alles mehr als bedauerlich. Und der entstandene Zeitpunkt ist nicht hilfreich für uns und unsere Ergebnisse. Denn was ist die Idee der Zukunftskonferenz? Doch gerade, dass wir mehr mit den Bürgerinnen und Bürgern ins Gespräch kommen und hören, welches Europa sie wollen. Dafür ist die direkte Beteiligung aller Bürgerinnen und Bürger in allen Formaten der Konferenz entscheidend. Die gemeinsam erarbeiteten Ergebnisse müssen wir diskutieren und debattieren. Wir müssen sie priorisieren, bewerten, auf Machbarkeit und Wirksamkeit prüfen. Das finde ich extrem wichtig. Denn wir... Die Vertreterinnen und Vertreter in den Regionen und Kommunen sind nah an den Bürgerinnen und Bürgern. Wir sind die Brücke zu Europa und können ihre Stimme hörbar machen und das wollen wir ja auch. In Baden-Württemberg haben wir mit direkter Bürgerbeteiligung bereits sehr gute Erfahrungen gemacht. Auch ich selbst als Landtagspräsidentin habe ein Bürgerforum zu Abgeordnetenpensionen erfolgreich durchgeführt und das war sicher nicht sehr einfach. Daran möchte ich anknüpfen. 
Am 28. Oktober starte ich in, im Landtag von Baden-Württemberg ein Bürgerforum. Ich möchte von jungen Zufallsbürgerinnen und Bürgern zwischen 16 und 30 Jahren wissen, was ihre Idee von der Zukunft Europas ist. Ich wünsche mir, dass wir damit einen Beitrag zum Gelingen der Konferenz leisten können. Wenn wir es nicht gemeinsam schaffen, die, Konferenz, die Zukunftskonferenz zu einem Erfolg werden zu lassen und dann noch aus zeitlichen Gründen, das wäre besonders zu bedauern, dann ist Frustration auf breiter Ebene vorprogrammiert. Dann bestätigen wir das Vorurteil, dass die EU ein Moloch ist. Das darf nicht passieren. Vielen Dank. Thank you very much. Mr. Vasco Cordero, our first Vice President, please. Em primeiro lugar, eu gostaria de dirigir uma saudação muito amiga à Senhora Comissária, Senhora Vice-Presidente, saudá-la pela pelo seu trabalho e pelo seu papel decisivo no reconhecimento da importância do Comitê das Regiões como interlocutor privilegiado no âmbito da Conferência naquilo que tem a ver com os poderes locais e regionais da Europa. Eu tenho, gostaria de partilhar uma observação e colocar duas ou três questões. A observação tem a ver com com um aspecto que me parece decisivo na forma como nós encaramos e nos posicionamos face à questão da auscultação dos cidadãos. Esse aspecto é decisivo. Ter os cidadãos informados e a participarem é um aspecto que ninguém, absolutamente ninguém, pode pôr em dúvida. Mas é essencial que não se crie a ideia de que, de alguma forma, se opõe um exercício de democracia direta àquela que é a democracia representativa que aqui nos traz. E este aspecto parece-me importante porque não é pelo facto da Conferência sobre o Futuro da Europa se ligar diretamente a este processo de auscultação dos cidadãos, que ela é mais democrática, ou que esse processo é mais democrático do que um processo em que os democraticamente eleitos representantes das autoridades locais e regionais, desde logo, se pronunciam sobre a Conferência sobre o Futuro da Europa. Repito, ninguém põe em dúvida a importância e o valor da auscultação dos cidadãos, mas julgo perigoso que se crie a ideia de que opomos uma, um exercício de democracia direta a um exercício de democracia representativa. As questões que eu gostaria de colocar à sua consideração, Sra. Comissária, tem a ver com o seguinte. Primeiro, já aqui ouvimos a ambição do Comitê das Regiões em relação ao Day After. Como é que a senhora comissária, como é que a Comissão vê o nosso papel, o papel do Comitê das Regiões, no dia a seguir a terminar a Conferência sobre o Futuro da Europa? Em segundo lugar... Dizer também que a questão do diálogo com os cidadãos não pode ser apenas, e apesar de todas as cautelas que referi anteriormente, ou observações, se quisermos, não pode ser um exercício que termine com a Conferência sobre o Futuro da Europa. Naquilo que ele traz de valor acrescido, de informação, de uma cidadania europeia informada, esclarecida, ele deve continuar para, para além disso. Eu recordo, por exemplo, a ideia que o antigo Presidente do Comitê das Regiões, Karl Heinz Lambert, e o Presidente do Comitê Económico e Social, apresentaram 
de haver, no fundo, este exercício de diálogo permanente com os cidadãos. Gostava também, se considerar adequado, obviamente, de ouvir a Sra. Comissária sobre este aspecto. Por último, muito se tem falado da importância de todos nós nos pronunciarmos sobre a forma como a União Europeia pode funcionar melhor. E se isso implicar uma alteração de tratados? E se para que a União Europeia funcione melhor, tivermos que alterar algum tra os tratados? Como é que vê essa possibilidade? Muito obrigado mais uma vez, Sra. Comissária, pelo seu contributo e pelo seu trabalho. Thank you, Vice President. Mr. Whoop, please, our next speaker. Ja, Frau Vizepräsidentin Schuitza, meine Damen und Herren, die Konferenz zur Zukunft Europas gibt eine einmalige Gelegenheit für die Bürgerinnen und Bürger direkt sich an dem Dialog zur Reform und Erneuerung der Europäischen Union zu beteiligen. Es ist unsere Aufgabe als Mitglieder des Ausschusses der Region, die Bürgerinnen vor Ort dazu zu ermutigen, an diesen Debatten teilzunehmen und Vorschläge auch grenzüberschreitend auf der digitalen Plattform vorzulegen. Berlin leistet hierzu auch einen Beitrag. Wir unterstützen die Akteure der Zivilgesellschaft in den Diskussionen, auch einen Beitrag zu leisten. Und wir organisieren selbst einen Bürgerinnendialog in dem Gebäude des Berliner Parlaments. Wir wollen dort Vorschläge entwickeln für ein gerechteres und sozialeres Europa. Ich denke, die Erfahrungen zeigen, dass die Debatte jetzt in Schwung gekommen ist. Und es wäre schade, wenn das jetzt schon gebremst werden würde. Ich denke, es wäre gut, wenn wir nächstes Jahr im Frühjahr einen Zwischenbericht haben und dann in eine Verlängerung der Diskussion gehen. Darüber hinaus denke ich, dass es wertschätzend wäre, die Vorschläge intensiv zu prüfen und auch in einen Konvent möglicherweise den ganzen Prozess münden zu lassen. Herzlichen Dank. Thank you. Ms. Fernandez Viana, please. You have the floor. Eh, sí, muy buenos días, querida comisaria. Formo parte de la delegación del Comité Europeo de las Regiones en la Conferencia sobre el Futuro de Europa y a principios de octubre he organizado en el Parlamento de Cantabria el primer pleno parlamentario con la participación de las principales instituciones de la región y de los representantes de la sociedad civil organizada para debatir sobre el futuro de Europa. Las conclusiones de las tres jornadas de ese debate ciudadano han sido recogidas en un manifiesto que hemos llamado Cantar de Habla en Europa y que presentaremos próximamente en Bruselas. El principal objetivo que tenemos los representantes del Comité de las Regiones es tratar, tratar de, reforma, de reforzar el papel de los entes locales y regionales en la democracia europea y el funcionamiento de la Unión Europea. La pandemia ha presentado la urgencia de que los entes locales y regionales ocupen una posición central para lograr una unión más democrática y cercana a los ciudadanos y, sobre todo, que responda a sus necesidades. Estamos pidiendo un mayor peso del Comité Europeo de las Regiones en la toma de decisiones de la Unión Europea, ya que, si bien las modificaciones introducidas, como todos saben, en el Tratado de Lisboa le permitieron obtener una presencia más incisiva en todas las fases del proceso legislativo europeo, creemos que ha llegado el momento de reivindicar que pase de ser un órgano meramente consultivo, cuyos dictámenes no son vinculantes, a devenir en una verdadera Cámara de Representación Territorial en los procesos de toma de decisiones. Muchísimas gracias a todos. Thank you very much. Mr. Bock, you have the floor. Mr. President, dear Commissioner, Jean Monnet wrote in 1950, Europe has never existed. We must genuinely create Europe. It must become manifest itself and it must have confidence in its own future. Dear Commissioner, I do believe that the Conference on the Future of Europe is exactly about that, the confidence in our own future. We should not be afraid to tell our citizens that democracy is not perfect. To have a crisis is not the end of democracy, but the real problem in democracy is the capacity to solve problems based on clear rules and in an effective and a functional Europe. The best politics is the politics of solving people's problems. I will end with a comment of Jean Monnet, very well known, better to war around the table than on a battlefield. Mieux vaut se disputer autour d'une table que sur une chambre de bataille. Merci beaucoup, Madame Présidente. Vous avez tout à fait raison, Monsieur le Premier Ministre. Mr. Wedel, now, please. 
Vielen Dank, Herr Präsident. Sehr geehrte Frau Vizepräsidentin, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, die Zukunftskonferenz ist im vollen Gang. Nur leider bekommen es noch zu wenig Menschen in Europa mit. Das müssen wir ändern. Und da kommt es insbesondere natürlich auf die lokalen und regionalen Gebietskörperschaften an. Wir in Nordrhein-Westfalen leisten unseren Beitrag zur demokratischen Weiterentwicklung der Europäischen Union. Die Landesregierung hat einen bundesweit einzigartigen Beteiligungsprozess zur Konferenz zur Zukunft Europas gestartet. In einer Online-Konsultation über make.org können Bürgerinnen und Bürger einfach und ohne Expertenwissen ihre Meinung zur zukünftigen Entwicklung der Europäischen Union äußern. Der Landtag Nordrhein-Westfalen plant ebenso im November einen europäischen Bürgerdialog zu den Themenbereichen europäische Mobilitätspolitik, Europas globale Rolle und Bürgernähe. Aus Sicht Nordrhein-Westfalens müssen junge Menschen bei der Konferenz der Zukunft Europas entscheidend mitwirken und deren Anliegen aufgenommen werden, ganz im Sinne des Jahres der Europäischen Jugend 2022. Vielen Dank. Danke schön. Mr. Armau, you have the floor. Grazie, Presidente. Grazie, Vicepresidente Suiza. La Commissione Affari Europei della Conferenza delle Regioni che eh, coordino eh, intende rappresentare attraverso eh, l'iniziativa di coinvolgimento dei territori quanto importante sia la presenza di comuni, regioni all'interno dell'Europa. Lo stiamo facendo coinvolgendo la Fondazione Megalizzi fondazione intitolata al giovane italiano ucciso nel 2018 dal terrorismo. Puntiamo a un'Europa che veramente spinga sul multilivello, che coinvolga le regioni, che trasformi il Comitato Europeo delle Regioni in un organo che almeno emetta pareri vincolanti e che comunque introduca un riconoscimento ancora più specifico per le isole europee, che sono un patrimonio dell'intera Europa e che ancora oggi vivono aspetti di marginalità. Un'ultima considerazione riguarda la conferenza e le sue potenzialità. Abbiamo davanti un percorso difficile dove però bisogna rilanciare il ruolo dell'Europa, pur sentendo alcuni venti pericolosi da alcuni paesi europei che contestano l'integrazione europea. E lo possiamo fare con lo spirito della conferenza di Messina. Io vengo dalla Sicilia e alla conferenza di Messina del 1955 si rilanciò, dopo una grave crisi, il processo di integrazione europea. Quello spirito deve pervadere il rilancio dell'Unione. Grazie per essere. Thank you very much. Mr. Cobor, you have the floor. Thank you, Mr. President. We, uh, we know that our people, our citizens, have very antagonistic uh, feeling for the European Union. It is a mixture of ex expectation, very big expectation sometimes, and skepticism. If we don't bring close to the citizens this conference and this, uh, this uh, organization, we will lose. Uh, skepticism will win and extremistic, uh, old-fashioned, nationalistic and identity political tendencies come to the fore. Therefore, local events are very important. Please su support is it, uh, these, uh, them as it possible. Uh, for instance, in our city page, uh, among the students, there is a very big tradition of political debate competition. This is an open event. And uh, we want to organize them this uh, event uh, in, uh, uh, to the, for the uh, uh, conference Future of Europe. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Kiefer, the floor is yours. Ms. Magyar. Köszönöm. Tisztelt alánök asszony. A jövőről gondolkodunk. Ez a jövő már csak részben a miénk. Sokkal inkább a gyermekeinké, az unokáinké, a további generációké. Szép jövő vár rájuk, ha mi itt és most el nem rontjuk. Sőt, szép jövő vár rájuk, ha egyáltalán lesz alkalmuk megszületni. A jelenleginél sokkal inkább középpontba kell helyezni a családokat. A természetes törekvést, hogy életünknek a gyermekeinkben folytatása legyen, ne akadályozzák anyagi gondok. Magyarországon széleskörű segítséget kapnak a gyermeket nevelő családok, kezdve az adókedvezményekkel, az iskolai támogatással, folytatva a lakásépítés támogatásával, és még sorolhatnám. 
Unikum például, hogy a nagycsaládosok 50%-os anyagi segítséget kapnak legalább hétüléses autóik megvásárlásához is. A magyar gyakorlat lehetne európai best practice is, hiszen az 1,2-es születési ráta már 1,5 fölé emelkedett, és bízunk benne, hogy ez tovább javul. Szóval felajánljuk a jó gyakorlatunkat követésre Európának. Köszönöm. Thank you very much. Mr. Karakszony, you have the floor. Tisztelt alelnök asszony, elnök úr, kedves kollégák! Európának akkor van jövője, ha erős tagállamokra épülő unióban gondolkodunk, és tiszteljük egymást, mely kölcsönös tisztelet Európa egységének a záloga. Mégis munkálkodnak olyan erők manapság, melyek az egység nevében számolnák fel a sokféleséget, pedig egy nemzetek feletti szintelen, szaktalan massza nem lehet egy olyan kontinens jövőképe, amely mindig is a különböző nemzetek kultúráiról, hagyományairól és a keresztény identitásában gyökerező vallási és történelmi örökségéről volt ismert. Ne felejtsük el, hogy az Európai Unió a nemzeti alkotmányoknak köszönheti a létét, a tagállamok adják az alapokat. És azt se felejtsük el, hogy az Európai Unió van a tagállamokért, és nem a tagállamok vannak az Unióért. Köszönjük a közös titkárság munkáját, nagyon számítunk a titkárság támogatására a konferencia folyamatában, és kérjük, hogy a platformra feltöltött tartalmakat megfelelő súlyjal kezeljék. Köszönöm szépen. Thank you, Mr. Kiefer, please. Sehr geehrte Frau Vizepräsidentin, sehr geehrter Herr Präsident, es ist erfreulich, dass die Diskussion über die Zukunft Europas weiterhin geführt wird. Ich habe aber davor Angst, dass so wie in vielen anderen Fällen wird diese Diskussion die Diskussion der europäischen Eliten. Die spiegeln auch die leider nicht so hohe Teilnehmerzahlen. In meiner Heimatregion, wo die durchschnittlichen Monatslöhne bei 400-450 Euro liegen, sind viele Themen, die im Rahmen der Zukunftskonferenz angesprochen werden, niedriger Relevanz. Mehrmals wird die Frage gestellt, wie kann man die EU-Bürger näher machen, so dass man die großen wirtschaftlichen Unterschiede zwischen West und Ost ausgleicht, so dass die sozialen Ungleichheiten aufgehoben werden, so dass man über die wirklich hautnahe Probleme der Europäer spricht und dann die EU diese Probleme auch löst. Dies ist die Aufgabe. Dankeschön. Thank you very much. Ms. Rickmans, please. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je voulais remercier Madame Suica pour son exposé. Je voudrais rappeler l'importance des jeunes dans la mobilisation pour le climat. On sait aussi la volonté des citoyens de préserver la planète et sa biodiversité. Et on connaît le souhait des aînés de transmettre une planète encore viable à leurs petits-enfants. Alors on comprend toute l'importance de l'Europe pour construire une société post-Covid, une société post-inondation, sur du solide, sur un pacte renouvelé avec les citoyennes et les citoyens. On l'a vu, et je représente les Verts au comité des régions, mais aussi le Sénat belge à la conférence pour le futur de l'Europe. Ce que je vois, ce sont les jeunes qui s'impliquent avec beaucoup d'enthousiasme. La conférence pour le futur de l'Europe a le mérite d'ouvrir euh, ce débat, de créer les conditions d'un échange entre les citoyens et nous, euh, les décideurs, sur le niveau européen qui nous impacte toutes et tous. Alors cet, cet échange, il doit se faire avec sérieux, avec transparence et avec anticipation. Et je plaide pour que, euh, Madame la vice-présidente, pour que les ordres du jour et les contenus des groupes de travail soient préparés en pleine concertation avec les citoyennes et les citoyens qui se sont exprimés dans les panels, qu'ils adoptent aussi des méthodes d'expression et d'intelligence collective. Euh, J'espère que ce sera vraiment le cas pour que la démocratie participative se transforme vraiment avec cette démocratie délibérative et que les solutions soient construites co collectivement. Je vous remercie. Merci beaucoup, madame. Mr. Bereni, please, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Madam Commissioner, we used to say that Europe is about values. Uh, and it's true. And we used to say that one of the most important values are the solidarity. However, when it comes to the concrete question, 
uh, there is a division among us, and it's obvious that there is a division. When we, for example, when we talk about what countries are important for us, probably there is a different view from east and south and north and west of Europe. When we're talking about different interest groups, when we're talking about different minorities, religious groups, there is a difference among us. What should be the content of the solidarity? However, if we take on board another value, which is the tolerance among each other, then we can solve the issues. Obviously, then comes the third very important issue is the functionality of the European Union. These two major, I would say, values like solidarity and tolerance has to be played in accordance with the functionality of the Europe. For me, the conference about Europe is also about finding a reasonable balance in between solidarity, functionality, and tolerance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is Ms. Kiefer connected now? Herr Präsident. Hello. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Herr Präsident, Frau Kommissarin, herzlichen Dank. Die Zukunft Europas kann nur gemeinsam mit unseren Bürgerinnen gestaltet werden. Und die österreichischen Länder, Städte und Gemeinden haben zahlreiche Initiativen ergriffen, insbesondere die Durchführung von Bürgerforen, um mit der Bevölkerung gemeinsam zu erarbeiten, wie das Europa gestaltet sein soll, in dem wir in den nächsten Jahrzehnten leben wollen. Und die aufbereiteten Ergebnisse werden in die Konferenz zur Zukunft Europas einfließen. Wir haben in Österreich auch schon seit Jahren das erfolgreiche Modell der Europagemeinderäte aufgebaut. Ich bin selbst eine davon. Und ich würde Sie, Frau Kommissarin, auch ersuchen, was unser Präsident der am Anfang der Debatte schon gesagt hat, dass wir hier auch eine bessere zu Zusammenarbeit im Wähleprojekt benötigen würden. Ich ersuche Sie, auf diese Frage auch noch einzugehen. Die Länder und Gemeinden spielen bei der Gestaltung der Zukunft Europas eine wesentliche Rolle. Sie sind die Verbindung Europas zu seinen Bürgerinnen und Bürgern. Wir müssen uns alle, liebe Kolleginnen und Kollegen, dafür einsetzen, dass dieser wesentlichen Rolle auch durch entsprechende Mitspracherechte bei der Konferenz zur Zukunft Europas Rechnung getragen wird. Vielen Dank. Danke schön. Mr. Hranic, please. Hvala, gospodine predsjedniče. Pozdrav povjerenice Šujica. Evo znamo kada govorimo o budućnosti Europe da je jedan od elementa i sigurnost Europske unije, s obzirom da dolazim iz iste zemlje iz koje je i naša povjerenica, zapravo sa granica Europske unije. Bitna je uloga tu Europske unije u ulazku zemalja Zapadnog Balkana u Europsku uniju. Svjesni smo činjenice da imamo dosta otpor od strane političkih stranaka koje su na čelu tih zemalja. Što se tiče samo ulazka u Europsku uniju i ispoštivanja određeni uvjeta da bi postale zemlje Članice, tu se postavlja i pitanje sigurnosti koje se evo u zadnjih nekoliko mjeseci ovoga postavlja pod veliki upitnik. E, imamo tu i Crnu Goru i Kosovo i Bosnu i Hercegovinu, sve teže i teže ovoga, dolazimo do nekih zajedničkih rješenja. Koliko ćemo uspjeti u ovoj e, konferenciji u budućnosti Europe uključiti sve te zemlje, pogotovo mlade u tim zemljama, ovoga, da prihvate ovoga, sva načela Europske unije i da pokušaju e, svoju političku elitu jednostavno prisiliti da što prije ovoga, prihvate ove uzuse e, i načela Europske unije i da naravno svi želimo da uđu što prije i u našu europsku obitelj, jer zemlje Zapadnog Balkana i pripadaju e, e, Europskoj uniji. Hvala. Thank you very much. Mr. McDonnell, our last intervention for this debate. Good morning uh, from Galway, uh, President, and thank you for the opportunity to speak on uh, the future of Europe. I was delighted that I was able to do my opinion last October and that it was unanimously adopted. And the most important thing I would say to everybody is that we must uh, get the trust of everybody. We must make sure that 
our citizens understand, are communicated with, are listened to and responded. This is the most crucial part of whatever we do with the future of Europe, that we set up the network that I proposed in the opinion, that we engage with the citizen and feed the information that all 27 countries get at the meetings they held, the hold with the citizen, and we uh, go back, even if we have to return and tell the citizen that, yes, this is a government problem, not an EU problem. We, but we must go back and engage with the citizen and tell them why we will be able to do what they want or why we cannot. Everybody must have the trust in the politician. And the one most important thing is the local and regional authorities are the, those areas of politics that the people believe in. And all of the barometers that were done even only yesterday we all believe that the local and regional authorities are, are the nearest to the system. And it is crucial that we as the COR members right across Europe engage with them, help them and make them better understand Europe. Go to Mina Magoth. Thank you very much. Uh, dear Vice President Suica, I think that uh, you have now a very good uh, feeling of what our members uh, stand for and uh, what their main uh, issues uh, and thoughts on the Conference on the Future of Europe are. So I directly give you the, the floor for your uh, reaction. Thank you very much, President. Uh, I was listening carefully and I heard a lot. There were 22 interventions and very different uh, views, so I have a really very good overview from uh, whole political spectrum and not only political but from all regions of Europe. So this was very interesting to listen to you. What I may say, what I understood, there are two issues. One is role of local and regional authorities in future after this conference and role of local and regional authorities and committee of the regions within the conference. When we talk about uh, the actual uh, state of play, as you know, uh, we really, we were really doing uh, whatever we could in accordance with joint declaration which was signed by three presidents, president of the commission, president of the parliament and the president of the council. So we did a lot, and we, as uh, we said at the beginning, 18 members of Committee of the Regions are taking part in, uh, in this uh, conference, plus 12 from different local and regional authorities, which was, uh, we, they were decided by you. So I think 30 of you is a pretty big number within uh, the procedures. But of course, what is the most important is this second part. What uh, will be the results in the end of this conference depends on your engagement, depends on your uh, subscription to multilingual digital platform, depends on organization of different events uh, on local and regional level. So whatever uh, you upload to digital platform will be taken into consideration. So this, is, this, this moment is very important to be actively engaged. Otherwise, I cannot, uh, there were many questions uh, asked about what is my opinion about this or that. I have many different opinions, but it's not uh, the moment to talk about this because I don't want to influence anyone. So uh, we said that we don't want uh, to preempt any result, uh, any, any outcome of this conference. So let us see what will be debated, what will be deliberated, what will be uploaded to the platform, and then we will have uh, uh, conclusions in the end. And uh, as we said, many of you were talking about uh, inclusion, openness, transparency. So these are key principles of this conference, inclusion, openness, and transparency. And this is what we are doing. And nothing, nothing is hidden and nothing uh, uh, the reason why, we, uh, let's go above from the beginning. What is the reason for the organizing such, uh, and such, an, um, such a brave ex a democratic exercise? I have to tell you that I don't know any democracy in the world that dared organize such an, uh, such, uh, an exercise, which is 
including citizens together with elected representatives uh, on local, regional, national level, uh, European level, together with members of government, together with uh, members of European Commission, civil society, on an equal footing. This is very important. And we have to use this opportunity if we want to be successful. Of course, I heard what you were saying, that there, is, uh, there, can, be an, uh, there can be expectations of citizens, and in the end, not, uh, we, we, will, we would not be able to deliver. So we have to do everything in order to be able, in the end, to deliver and to uh, make citizens not only feel, but make them be part of the uh, drafting uh, process. We want citizens to see that they can influence drafting European policies. This is the very idea of this conference. Of course, it is very complex, and uh, we spent some time, I must uh, tell you, to talk about uh, rules of procedure. So we spent some time, and uh, last, uh, the last uh, decision was on working groups. So we, I think we uh, managed to do this, so working groups are uh, to be, uh, um, they will be established in, in, uh, in a week or two, and uh, I hope uh, that uh, many of you will participate in different working groups. We still need two chairs from national parliaments. Seven chairs are already uh, 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 elected or um, uh, so chosen. So uh, terms of procedure were a little bit complex, but this is because the whole uh, European uh, project is complex. So three this is the first time in history that three institutions work together and that no decision can be brought without having consensus. This is something which, uh, on which uh, we have been doing uh, behind the curtains a lot. Now everything is here, so the rules are here and uh, everything depends on engagement and on uh, activity of all of us. All of us, yeah, I'm in charge on behalf of the Commission, but all of us, uh, Commission is not owner of this conference. Uh, Parliament is not owner, also the same goes for the Council, the same goes for the Committee of the Regions. All of us have ownership, all of us have responsibility, and it depends on us what the, what the outcome will be in the end. So this is very important to, to bear in mind. Uh, of course, that uh, state of democracy uh, cannot be taken for granted, so we have to cherish our democracy. It is not static, all of you know. So democracy is, has been evolving or is evolving all the time, having in mind the uh, development of technologies, so all of us have to be... Uh, uh, to take uh, pace with, uh, with, uh, with the uh, development of technology. And uh, uh, it has big impact on democracy. So we have to, this, this is the reason why we are all the time saying we have to make our democracy fit for the future. This means also that, and it depends on all, on all of us. So um, I think that um, uh, I'm not afraid of uh, what the outcome will be. We said... Everything is possible. All topics uh, are on the table. We chose nine of them uh, on multilingual digital platform, but within these citizens' panels, there are four different clusters, and any topic is welcome, so it depends on, on the interest of our citizens. Uh, at the moment, we had first uh, interim report on the platform. We saw what is... Uh, we haven't ranked yet, but we saw what is... Uh, 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 what are the most interesting topics at the moment? Climate change and environment first, second, the European democracy, and then uh, at the beginning we thought it will be health, health issues, but uh, regardless of the fact that we are still in the middle of this pandemic wearing all these masks, so people are obsessed with the future, which means climate change and uh, everything which is also priority of European Commission at the moment. But European democracy is also uh, very high on the agenda of uh, our citizens. But it's very, it is early to draw any conclusion because we still don't have I think we, we need to have more citizens, more people, not only those who are usually uh, dealing with us and who are usually people who are, who are usually uh, within this so-called Brussels bubble. We, we, we want to burst this bubble. We want to, as uh, someone mentioned, the Sicilian and uh, 
islands, but there are uh, smaller islands than Sicily, so we want to uh, reach any island in Europe and any mountain in Europe, regardless of, of, uh, of uh, political background or any background of our citizens. Uh, there are people who doubt uh, in our European project. There are people who are skeptical. We also want to approach them to see what, st what, is, uh, what is the reason for their uh, uh, point of view um, uh, against uh, Europe, Europe, European project. This is also very important to know nowadays. So there are many, uh, uh, we are very open. Nothing is hidden. I want to uh, reassure you that uh, we are really working hard, trying uh, to uh, reach to each and every citizen. And your help is very important, because without you, we wouldn't be able to reach our citizens. When you mentioned that on, there are more than a million more than a million elected representatives. So all of you have your constituencies. So there are millions and millions of people whom you can approach and whom you can uh, uh, cover, whom you can uh, talk to. So this is very important. Of course, nowadays the digitals are very important. And I was talking about this digital gap. Digital gap exists. And um, since uh, we noticed that uh, most of those who are uh, active on digital platform are from 19 to 39 years. Old. We have to somehow um, change this because digital literacy is also important. We also notice that there are um, less than 30 percent of women and uh, others are men and, and uh, I don't know. So uh, we have to uh, encourage women to take part. So young people are there, young people are interested and what is very important as you know that third of our citizens panels are comprised of one third of young people. When we say young people, that means 16 to 25, which means uh, I'm talking about future because someone was mentioning that they will have a bright future. The lady who was uh, talking about families and large families, of course, it's not by coincidence that our recovery and resilience plan is uh, popularly called Next Generation EU. So we are preparing our Europe for next generation, but not us maybe here, but we together with young people, together with them. So we cannot, I usually say, we cannot talk about them without them. So we need them because they are um, uh, creative, they have fresh brains, they are, uh, they, know, they are innovative, and we badly need young people together with us. But also, we have to take into consideration older people because they are also uh, experts, they, are, they have wisdom, they are, um, uh, we, they are valuable parts of our society. So here comes this intergenerational solidarity. So we have to take everyone into consideration because because when you know, when you know that uh, aging uh, is one of the topics which I'm dealing with within my portfolio, that we live 10 years more on average in Europe, that means that we have to take everyone into consideration because uh, it, it is also very important. So uh, your, I, I was listening to your deliberation. Also, there was one, um, not question, but deliberation on whether, whether uh, this will harm representative democracy, this deliberative democracy or participative democracy. I think, and this is our uh, definite, definite, definite uh, standpoint, so uh, this is only to empower elected elected the members of the European Parliament, members of the national parliaments, you too. So you, they, some of them claimed and said uh, we are uh, elected directly, so why do we need citizens? But we cannot let citizens be without any information for four or five years waiting for next election. So we want them to be active all the time in democratic processes. And uh, on top of all, we want also to involve children. This, is very important for us because uh, children, we have to teach them from very early childhood to be active participant, uh, participants in democratic procedures. And this is for us also very important. So uh, I'm, uh, I think that I, I, I was trying to, to, to answer all your uh, questions and uh, your concerns. Uh, Cross-border, of course, uh, this is very important. Cross-border cooperation and uh, I, I firmly believe that there will be no borders and that uh, Schengen will be uh, for all member states, not only for some of them. 
and uh, we are working hard on this uh, and also in European Commission and European, in European Parliament. So uh, uh, this is uh, something uh, which makes us Europeans and our single market is the, precious, the most precious uh, thing we achieved in the European Union, uh, especially now when we talk about Energy, but I don't want to. <laughs> I don't want to start this. So uh, transparency, open borders, uh, working groups, um, uh, importance, uh, and the role. I, I, I will come uh, to the beginning. What is the role of the Committee of the Regions? It will depend of you, on your deliberations and on your input during these panels. Who knows uh, what will uh, be the outcome of this? Uh, conference. I'm not talking about someone mentioned treaty. I'm not uh, opting for changing the treaty because there is enough space within the existing treaty, but if citizens opt for that, we will be obliged to, to uh, reply to that call. But uh, this is what our President von der Leyen also said uh, and reiterated this year in the speech of the Union. But this is not what we are inviting citizens for, because we think there is enough space within existing uh, existing treaty, but as I said, everything is possible. So I really want to thank you for your deliberations. Uh, we are open in European Commission uh, to continue our cooperation, and uh, uh, I have very good relations with your president and uh, looking forward uh, to our future uh, cooperation. Thank you very much. Before I thank you, uh, I would like to show you a video on the Conference on the Future of Europe. It's time to start building our future together. The Conference on the Future of Europe must not become... We are ready. On Wednesday, EU leaders signed off on a plan to launch the Conference on the Future of Europe. Will the people of Europe finally get their say? Today we want to hear about the Europe our citizens are dreaming of. Per tutti i cittadini europei la possibilità di plasmare il nostro futuro. Lei non c'è niente da dire? Io c'ho molto da dire. It's time to start building our future together. The Conference on the Future of Europe must not become a beauty contest between Brussels and its institutions. Citizens must no longer feel forgotten, neglected, or left behind. Se agirmos todos juntos, mas é que está o cavalo de pessoas voz um. Be part of the process. So, Commissioner, I want to thank you not only for uh, your time uh, today to be one more time here in, uh, uh, once again in, in our plenary, but I want to thank you mostly for your dedication, your uh, exceptional work in the Conference on the Future of Europe, and uh, I want to reassure you that uh, this House, uh, this institution, the European Committee of Regions is at your disposal. You should consider us as we are your strongest ally and friend, and we know very well that uh, uh, in your uh, character, in your personality, we find uh, also uh, someone who not only believes in the values that we all share, since you have served at the local level as mayor in the past, but also a visionary politician that Europe needs today. So thank you very much again for being with us and for your support. Thank you.